Conservative justices appear ready to overturn decades of Supreme Court precedent that could dramatically change how colleges and universities use race in admissions. The justices heard arguments today for nearly five hours as protesters chanted outside the court. Two cases today, one against Harvard, the other against the University of North Carolina, Chapel Hill. During arguments, conservative justices hinted using race as a consideration for admission could be discriminatory. Race in some, for some highly qualified applicants can be the determinative factor just as being the, a, you know, an oboe player in a year in which the Harvard Radcliffe Orchestra needs an oboe player will yeah, be the tip. We did not fight a civil war about oboe players. I, we did fight a civil war to eliminate racial discrimination, and that's why it's a matter of, of, of considerable concern. But the outnumbered liberal justices suggested universities need racial diversity. Justice Elena Kagan said American institutions should reflect America. I guess what I'm saying is your brief, and this is very explicit in your brief, is like it just doesn't matter if our institutions look like America. I guess what I'm asking you is, doesn't it? I mean, doesn't it? These are the pipelines to leadership in our society. So those are parts of the arguments. Lower courts have sided with the universities. Now, it could be months, possibly as late as June, before we know the court's decision. NBC's Morgan Radford spoke with some of the people at the center of the argument, college students. Hey there, Shep. So put simply, these cases could ultimately put an end to affirmative action in higher education. In fact, right now, more than 40% of all the universities in America consider race in some form when it comes to their admissions processes. That's according to one 2019 report. And if you think public opinion is divided on this, well, you're right. One recent poll found six in 10 Americans actually do not want race to be considered in college admissions. But that same poll found roughly the same number of people do say programs designed to to increase racial diversity on campus are actually a good thing. But the big question is, what do the students think? We went to the University of North Carolina, one of the colleges at the heart of these cases, to find out. The university says that, you know, it wants to be able to at least consider race as one of many factors in the admissions process because it argues that a diverse student population benefits everyone. What do you say to that argument? Well, frankly, I think that that's problematic thinking in and of itself because what they're saying there is that if they don't take race into account, that you won't have black and brown people on campus and I don't think that's the case so I think that you have to have faith in black and brown people that they will still be on campus because they have the ability to produce the same outcomes as do white and Asian individuals. So by a show of hands how many of you believe that race should be a consideration when it comes to college admissions? All of you. Why do you think considering race is important? Uh, race is not something that we can take off. Race is something that has impacted us on every step towards getting to college. This is a place that wasn't built for us and that people are actively trying to stop us from getting to. The questions of our merit in achieving where we are now is a little confusing to me because white students' merit is never considered in that conversation despite their 300-year head start that they've had. And so race-conscious admissions is not only fundamental, it's essential. And just for context, black and Latino students make up 19% of UNC student body and 33% of students nationwide. Shep? Morgan, thanks. Let's turn to Amy Howe now, lawyer, co-founder of the SCOTUS blog, reporter covering the Supreme Court. Amy, thanks. As always, the, the lawyer arguing against affirmative action considerations seem to suggest that there are actually ways to consider race outside of checking a box on an application. That's right. That you could consider it, I think, for example, in an essay that a student writes about his or her experiences, his life experiences, which may include, for example, being discriminated against and how you responded. But what they resisted was the idea that simply checking a box would be enough for universities to consider race as part of the admissions process. Back to the landmark affirmative action case in 2003 that I'm sure many of our viewers are aware of, Justice Sandra Day O'Connor wrote that the court expected affirmative action wouldn't be necessary in, say, 25 years. Well, it's, it's been about 20. Conservative justice seem concerned today that there may never be an end to using race in college admissions. 
That's right. There was debate about exactly what Justice O'Connor meant in that opinion back in 2003. Was it an, a requirement, as Justice Brett Kavanaugh suggested, or was it more sort of a, a guideline, as some of the lawyers defending the university said? But that was a huge concern for much of the five hours of oral argument today is, as Justice Amy Coney Barrett said, you know, when is the end point? When are universities going to be at the point that they will no longer have to consider race and how do you figure out when that is? Is there a percentage in terms of the various uh, levels of diversity in the student body? Like, how, how does that, how do universities even figure that out? Did it sound to you like a 6 3 split and affirmative actions out? Uh, it did. It, you know, I'm not, it's not 100% clear exactly what's going to happen in the case. If I had to, to guess, I would guess that the justices are likely to just straight up overrule the court's 2003 decision in Grutter, but there were definitely six justices, the six conservative justices on the one side who were very skeptical, and the three justices, and at one point in the Harvard case, only two justices, because Justice Katanji Brown-Jackson recused herself from that case, uh, who were supporting the universities. Before we go, there are a number of cases on race. What are you watching for in this term? Uh, you know, there's another case coming up involving the Indian Child Welfare Act, the case next week involving the constitutionality of this federal law, which expresses a uh, preference after the history of Native Americans in our country for Native American children to either remain with extended family or with other Native Americans rather than be adopted by a family that's not Native American. And one of the arguments in that case is that the, the challenging the constitutionality of the law, saying that it is, it is in effect racial discrimination. Uh, you know, there are a couple of voting rights cases that also involve race. One was argued in the last session in uh, early October, involving the Voting Rights Act and uh, drawing of congressional maps for Alabama. But the court's decision in the, in that case. Could it could affect whether or not states can consider race or whether they have to consider race in drawing federal maps all over the country. Mm. Amy Howell from SCOTUS Blog, thank you.